So in this video, I wanna talk about the five biggest mistakes made by data analysts. These are mistakes that I see regularly in my industry and I have seen these kind of mistakes being made over the last seven years as a data analyst myself. Some of these mistakes I've made and I want to make sure that you guys don't make the same mistakes. So in this video, we're gonna cover those, what they are, and I'll help you out by giving you some tips and advice. Let's begin. So number one, the biggest mistake you can make as a amateur analyst is to include formulas in your spreadsheets when you share those spreadsheets with users and stakeholders. Number one, you should not be sending any formulas in any spreadsheets whenever you share your work. The likelihood of those formulas breaking is very high and if those formulas don't work and people are reading specific figures and numbers and they're quoting those numbers in meetings and boardroom meetings or whatever it may be in the high level reports, the blame is gonna be on you because you've put formulas in which have essentially broken and as a result, it's giving the wrong data to the wrong person. So do not include formulas. What you wanna do whenever you share a spreadsheet is copy and paste over all formulas in your spreadsheet or your workbook before you share across with your stakeholder. And you should be doing that anyway because adding formulas to a workbook in an Excel file increases the size of the file. So what you wanna do is reduce the size of the file and make sure you remove formulas. Number two is version control. Now, I've done this before. I've sent a file over to a stakeholder. They loved it. But in a month's time, they come back to me and say, Sid, can you resend me the file again and refresh the data? The problem is I've already lost the file. I can't remember which version it was. So what you need to do is practice what I call version control and essentially organization. Make sure that every file that you work on guys is numbered. Now either give it a version number or give it a date. The choice is up to you. I personally use a date. So every file that I work on will have like today's date or will have yesterday's date. So I know the version that I'm working on. And every day I make sure I save a new version just to keep in check so I don't forget which version that I last shared with a user or the latest version that I'm working on. And get organized. Make sure you have folders specifically for different projects, whether you have it for different teams, whether you have it for different stakeholders, whatever it may be, make sure you have a folder so you spend less time looking for work that you've done in the past. And when you're on the spot, when you're in a, when you're in a pressured environment, when you've got a deadline, you're not running around like a headless chicken looking for a file which may be sat in some inbox somewhere which has got deleted. So make sure, guys, you organize all your data files in, in a logical order and make your life a lot easier. Number three, using count when you should be using count distinct. So in this image right now, up on the screen, you've got five orders. Now on the face, at face value, you may think these are five orders from five different customers, but you'd be wrong. Because if you look carefully, you'll realize that in fact, we don't have five customers, but we have three customers looking at the customer ID. So what we're saying here is on account distinct basis, we actually have three customer orders. We don't have five. And that can, when you're dealing with large sets of data or large volume data, your, your count and your count distinct can be significantly different. So depending on your project or your use case, make sure you ask the your manager or your stakeholder in question, or make sure you understand whether you need to use account distinct or account to analyze your data. More often than not, you need to be using account distinct. So make sure guys, you get that right. The easiest way to use account distinct is to add it to your data model in your Excel file when you create a pivot table. You can only do it in an XLS file and you, can only, you can't do it in a CSV file, but in doing so, you'll have a new option which is called count distinct, which otherwise you wouldn't have available to you in any other pivot table. So you have to check the box which says add to data model. Number four is the summing up of percentages. You can't be summing up percentages. That's not how it works. Percentages are calculated when you divide one by another, usually a numerator by a denominator. Now, if you're looking at a series of percentages, you can't add them up at the end. So what you want to do is you want to recalculate the percentage, take the numerator and count, divide by the denominator. So an example of this in up on the screen right now is cost of sales out of total revenue. That would give you a percentage. But if you were to calculate this and sum up multiple line items, say for individual orders or individual customers, you'd get a broken percentage number. So make sure guys, you're recalculating your percentages. Okay, and number five, last but not least, is failing to understand context. 
any project you work for, any company you work for, or any stakeholder you work for will have a context. If you're dealing in retail sales, you'll have a context. If you're dealing in medical information, you'll have a context. If you're dealing in financial information, you'll have a context. Understanding the context will make you a better data analyst. Before you start to slice and dice data, before you start to analyze it, you wanna make sure you understand the context of the data in question. So for example, if you're dealing with retail sales, inevitably you'll see seasonality. And in Q4, round about Christmas time, you'll see a spike. So what does that mean? Whenever you see these kind of movements in the data, whenever you see extra additional records or whatever it may be, spikes in figures, costs, revenue, you name it. Understanding the context of your data will make you more accurate in terms of the conclusions you're drawing to and in terms of the recommendations you're putting forward. So make sure you understand the context. Don't just randomly say, we saw a spike here, I don't know what it's about, or we saw a fall here without giving a valid reason. And the only way you can do that is to understand the data context. So guys, the best way to do this is to go speak to what I call an SME, a subject matter expert, someone who understands the data more than you do. Could be a product owner, could be you know a business manager. Go speak to them, get them to describe the data to you, get them to explain the database to you, get them to explain the tr whatever it is that you're tracking, whatever data the data is based on, get them to explain it to you before you start to work on it. That's my final tip when it comes to technical five technical mistakes that you can make as a data analyst. But that's not it. I wanted to give you three more tips, and these are three mistakes I see being made, which are business related. Number one is lack of communication or failure to communicate. If you're dealing with stakeholders, you need to be speaking to them. You need to understand when they want work turned around, if they've got a deadline in mind, what that deadline is. If you're guessing or you're or you're not delivering work on time, then there's a breakdown in your communication. It will really impact your career and your job. So the, one of the most pivotal things you wanna do is make sure you're clear in understanding what it is stakeholders want. Send them an email afterwards so they can confirm what it is that they've asked for and you can validate what it is that you need to do. And if you're late for deadlines, you're missing deadlines, you need to tell stakeholders early. If you're gonna be late for something, tell them early so there's no surprises when it comes to deadline day. The second tip I have for you, which is a business tip, which actually can be a bit different depending on how you look at it, is to not have a three-page CV. I've seen people who work in data analytics and other industries that have a three-page CV. There really is no need for it, guys. If you want to career as a data analyst or work in data, you at the bare minimum and at the max, you should have no more than two pages in your CV. If you have three or four pages in your CV, that tells me that you're not able to prioritize or highlight your most important aspects in your career or your profile. So stick to a two page CV guys, that's the best way you stand a chance of getting jobs in future. And last but not least guys, probably the most fundamental business issue and most biggest business mistake I see being made by data analysts, Naturally, we're an introverted bunch. We like to keep our thoughts to ourselves. When we've got ideas and things, we kind of explain it in our own head and we run through with it. But the problem we have is that we don't ask questions. So one thing you need to do is ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Any piece of work, whatever your manager tells you, if you listen to a colleague, they're explaining something, ask questions, it'll improve your understanding. And when it improves your understanding, you'll be a better data analyst. So make sure guys, you speak up in meetings, you speak up on Zoom calls, you speak up in one-to-ones, you speak up in your daily stand-up, whatever it may be, make sure you ask questions. So guys, that wraps up my top tips. That wraps up my top five biggest mistakes being made by data analysts. I've given you three additional business ones as well. Don't make the mistake that I've made, guys. All of these mentions that I've covered right now are mistakes I've made in the past, and I've been lucky. They've saved me sometimes. I've, I've just about got through certain projects where I've missed deadlines. I've not communicated with people. Don't make the mistake that I've made when I was much younger. Do start writing down the best habits and stick to good habits and make sure you avoid some of those mistakes that I've covered in today's video. Guys, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.